for a chance to one day be known as a great in the sport of boxing. It's all coming up next as the Brooklyn Brawl starts now. From the Millennium Theater in Brooklyn, New York, it's Brooklyn Brawl. I'm Mark Amazon with Michael Woods, and we have Brooklyn Brawl here tonight. Our main event, an outstanding fight for the WBC International Cruiserweight Championship. Two undefeated young fighters, Stephen Bouye taking on Junior Wright. So it looks like we got 12-0 against 10-0. The New Yorker against the guy from Chicago looking to come in and derail him. Really, really looking forward to this intriguing matchup. Very intriguing. We rarely see two undefeated fighters so early in their career laying it on the line. What do you think their mindset is taking this big risk so early in the career? Mindset is props to the promoter, Dimitri Salidas, setting it up. Two unbeaten guys. Someone's, oh, got to go. Cruiserweight WBC belt up for grabs in Brooklyn. We'll be seeing some of the best fighters in New York on our undercard. We'll be joined in a minute by trainer extraordinaire Normal Lorik, and we'll be back with our first bout just after this. There were many great fights on the card here at the Millennium Theater. Early in the evening, we saw a lightweight battle between Kazakhstan's Dimash Nizov and Puerto Rico's Jose Duval, followed by a middleweight clash between rising prospect Steve Martinez from the Bronx and Massachusetts warrior Antonio Chavez Fernandez. Mike Woods and Nermal Lorik had the call. Oh, a nice combination. A left, right, and another left. Have to shut that yes. down. Have to shut that yeah, down. And go. that's one way that's to a, do it yeah. with an overhand right hand. He found a home for the overhand right now. You got to come back with a hook. You got to put it together. Laying back there. And another massive. right hand. Stay right there, and man. yet another. Oh, Looks like he's found something there with that right hand. That's right. Nizov hurt him badly. <laughs> the victor from Kazakhstan, Demash Nayazov. Left hook has been hellacious. About five of them have landed hard and clean on the Massachusetts box. Even when he's hurt and rocked, he knows how to survive as he eats two more right hands. I think the referee should be stepping in at any moment and trying to stop this fight. Salida really liking the work from Steven Martinez here at the Millennium Theater. There's much more action here from the Millennium Theater coming up next. Welcome back to the Brooklyn Brawl here at the Millennium Theater in Brooklyn. We now go to a battle which saw Russian power hitter Alexei Zubov square off against Pennsylvania journeyman Glenn Thomas. Here's Mike Woods and Normal Lorik with the call. Four rounds heavyweight Alexei Zubov, Glenn Thomas. Here we go. Indeed. Zubov looked like a um, cruiserweight. He's really 210, two a smaller guy. Yeah, these are not jumbo XL yeah, heavyweights, yeah. normal. It's a lot of slapping going on. If you turn his punches over, it might be. Wow. Zuboff is um, throwing a lot of slaps. You know, he's slapping with his punches instead of tightening up on his glove and turning it over. Now he's still learning on the job, too, and yes. oh, as a professional. 103 at 20 record, allegedly, as an amateur, so. This guy isn't green, but to the pro style, yep. still acclimating to it. Looks like he got some good pop here. Thomas is eating a lot. Thomas is on the defense. You know, that's hard to get a knockout that way. But um, Zubinov, he's really going to the body. I think he's, you know, that's going to take a toll as the fight go along. There you go. He's, if the fight, fight goes, goes on, Nermo. I think he might survive the first round if the referee don't get involved and stop the fight. He's taking a, a lot of shots. But he's t blocking a lot of punches. You know, he's not really taking a lot of clean shots. So Thompson is probably a survivor in the ring. And I think it, the referee is looking at this closely. I don't know. He's looking like he might step in there. Thomas eating too much, and the referee is barking at him. You got to answer. You're taking a hard, clean shots, right hands, body and head. It's been a one-sided fight so far. I don't know if it's a... Um, 
a peekaboo style. He's trying to like come back. Oh, that's think, a so. I think hard he's hurt. right I think hand. That's it right and he, he takes and a the knee. Referee and the, and referee. the referee has halted the fight. That is it. That is all she wrote. Thomas drops a one and three. Zubob now three and zero. Oh. Three and zero oh now with three knockouts. So how's it feel? I feel good. Yeah, prepared. Very good for this fight, and I show what I can. How much does this mean to you? Not only fight in New York, Brighton Beach, a, a very Russian neighborhood, a lot of Russian people out in the crowd. Uh, how, how that help you? What's this mean to you? I feel uh, that Russian people uh, help me. I feel good like at home, you know, and I do what I can. Next up on Brooklyn Brawl Boxing, super heavyweight Jarrell Big Baby Miller looks to add to his eight knockouts as he squares off with cruiserweight Josh Harris. Mike Woods and Nermal Lorik have the call. 263 pounds, he wears it pretty well. Jarrell Miller, 25 years old, AKA Big Baby. I have seen him come to the ring before in diapers. Thank the Lord he didn't do that tonight. The Millennium Jarrell. Theater in Brooklyn, Nermal Lorik. Like I said, I think he could go a long way. He's got good size as a heavyweight. Eight, no, eight knockouts and also 22 and one as a kickboxer. And he has been on the big stages as, as a kickboxer too. So this guy, he loves big stages. I mean, he is a, he is a character with a capital C. Loves to talk. I love his colorful charisma. So. In that way, I admit I want to see a character rise. Heavyweight from New York, great chair, talker. Bro. Love to see it. You Would you like to see him? Mm, 20 pounds less than that, 263. What should he be weighing, first off? I think about 245, 250. Okay. But he carries it well, though. He's he not a, you know, a, um, a fat, you know, real fat guy. He could shed a few pounds off. But I think Jarrell is a really, he carries his weight very good. He punches. Tremendous thighs. Yes. Great God. You gotta, if you pop that jab a little more, open him up, see? There you go, there you go. Josh Harris, Southpaw from Youngstown, Ohio, 31 years old, 213 pounds, 9, 7, and 1. Is he gonna go to 9, 8, and 1 and get stopped early by this big baby, this big beastly baby, Jarrell Miller? Yeah, I think Jarrell is gonna break him down and eventually stop him. Gerald is um, he's he has a long arms and I think he uses jab a little more effective. You know when you reach in there with the big guys and you know the Klitschko's and some of the bigger heavyweights they use their jab in a faster. He he can't get inside and want to bang with all these guys. I asked Miller yesterday, who are you fighting? He said, I don't know. It don't matter. Well, really, exciting. whoever you're gonna put me in front of, I'm gonna take him out. He said, people have been pulling out of this fight. He said, I heard one guy robbed a bank to get out from fighting me. And he's basting Harris on the ropes. Bang, a hard right hand. I think Gerald is going to um, step in here and try to take, take an end to this fight. I think he's going to go, he's going to live to see another round. Miller having his way with Harris, however. Nice little combination there. Corner calls for a body shot and bang, two of them right there from Miller. And you see, did Gerald step over a little more to his left and bring that liver punch? He threw an uppercut to the body. I think it'd be an easy, easier punch for him because you get hit to the liver, it's hard to stand up to that kind of punch. Harris's left eye looks a little bit uh, yeah, iffy little bit now. now yes. Bloodshot and swelling a little bit. Big Baby relaxed in there, having his way Boys. with Joshua Harris from Youngstown, the fighting town of Youngstown. Gonna have to see all of that Youngstown heart. <laughs> Round two, Jarrell, Big Baby Miller and Joshua Harris there you go. He here at the Millennium. That That's what I wanna see Jarrell use more, his jab. A little bit of a half jab though, no normal, well, sorry. Better than no jab. And, okay, better than um, no just... jab. You like to and see him pump it though a little bit more, right? Pump that jab. Doesn't have to be Larry Holmes, but no, pump no. it now. But if he practiced, this is a perfect fight for him to learn. You know, he's, plus he's right. fighting a southpaw, which you know throws him off. And he didn't. It didn't right. really bother him in the first round, but he was staying to the body and went, right. banging inside. You might more so just be using that jab as sort of a uh, blocker to Locker. bring that right hand behind it. Okay. 
corner calling for him to pop the jab, absolutely. Get some snap on it there. I think because Harris is expecting the right hand. So he's not and expecting that left hand. Crisp left hook there yeah. from Miller. Do like the way that Miller listens to his corner. They call for a body shot and bang, there it is. Jarrell is a big puncher. You, you can see the weight difference from Jarrell to Harris. You know, yeah. it's like even in the punches. And down goes Harris on his behind. Yes, he got hit with an uppercut and then a body shot. How do his eyes look, Normal? I think his his eyes are closed right now. He's trying to collect himself. I think the referee got to take a close look at him because he's just going to get hurt. You know, I think this, as you said, as we talked before, the 265 and 213 is, a, you know. That's about 30, 40 pounds different, and I think. Body, baby. Miller is pressing the issue, putting together combos, low and high, unimpeded power shots. That's it. That's it. The referee stops the fight in round two. Jarrell Miller, landing punches. That was a great. Josh shot. Harris not answering back. Big baby with a big stoppage win. When you hear a guy like. Dimitri, who's been to the mountaintop, fought for the world title, say that you're, put you in the same sentence as Tyson, Bo, and, and the rest. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's all about, you know, heavyweights back then had a lot more work around. You know what I mean? Right now, I'm building my way to slow weight, but we're doing it the right way. You know what I mean? So I'm just happy to be from the same hometown with those guys and work hard and follow in the same footsteps and hopefully be getting for a title shot like how Dimitri did and do my thing, baby. So I'm going to run around at a time. One run at a time. So I can say, you know, thank God. He's not shy either. No, nah, no, nah, far from it. Holla at your boy. <laughs> Your winner, Jarrell Big Baby Miller, will be back on Brooklyn Brawl just after this. Welcome back to the Brooklyn Brawl here at the Millennium Theater. It's now time for the main event, a 10-round battle with the World Boxing Council International Cruiserweight title on the line. Undefeated Stevens, Superman Bujaj of New York City takes on Junior Anthony Hurricane Wright of Chicago. Mike Woods and Nurma Lorik have the call. Stakes are immense here. Steve Bouye, age 23, 198 pounds, 12 and 0. Versus Junior Wright, age 27, 10 and 0 with nine KOs, 198 pounds. Stakes are really immense here. WBC International Cruiserweight Championship is on the line here. Virtually unheard of for guys with this few fights. To me, it enters looking like a coin flip fight. Two high class, high grade boxers. You're right, oh, Mike. Then this is like a 90% knockout ratio with these two guys. This is gonna this is gonna have some fireworks here, both guys. But Jun, Junior seems like he's he don't understand Bougie out. He's standing fight. Money up, man. I thought you want to see right away. Yes. Who believes they have the faster hands? Right away, these guys are assessing each other. You absolutely. Bouye, right. I said, what's gonna happen in this fight? He says, you know what? I'm gonna figure out everything in the first round. Kid does not lack for confidence. Wright, Wright doesn't ease either. Wright comes to fight. Wright is a, he's a big, strong guy. Check out some YouTube on Wright, man. I saw him snapping off four quick, flicking left hooks on a guy. Uh, he's something real. you don't see all that often. Guy's very slick. He's fighting Steve fight right now. I think Steve Booyah would like him to come in forward and He'll stand there and bang with it when you have to. Wright does like to be the aggressor. He says he can do a little bit of everything, but... I can't, I can't see this fight going the distance. These guys, with, with the ratio of punches and the style they have, is going to be really exciting. And Bouye is leading the harder, landing the harder, cleaner shots thus far. Finding a home for the left hand. Catching Wright coming in. Nice right hand. And these guys are fighting like middleweights. They're not throwing one punch at a time. They're throwing a combination. So far, the strategy is is uh, in Booyah's favor. Right coming forward and 
Nice we are picking shot. him off as he comes in. Will Wright adapt, Nermal? That is the question. I think Wright came out with a strategy of trying to be aggressive, and I think that's not good for him. He's a slick guy. I, you know, I've seen him. But he's walking right into Bujiev, right hand and hook. Bouye, an accurate puncher. He will catch you coming in. You have to be very smart when you're coming in on this kid. He has good leg movements, and he's, he, he likes to stand there and fight also. So he's not, he's not going to run. He's going to stand there and make it a fight. And the key to that, correct me if I'm wrong, is staying calm, cool, and collected. He doesn't worry if someone's coming at him, throwing heavy, fun, heavy thunder at him. No, he's not. I see he right takes making... deep breaths in that ring. Bouye is a... Right, he's starting oh, cool to make some customer. adjustments with his jab and being a little more slicker with his head. I think Bougie is trying to get his, get his second win here. His breathing is not as smooth as it's supposed to be. Here in round two at the Millennium Theater in Brighton Beach, Brooklyn. I think it would be a, a good thing to sit and get a, you know, breather sometime. But um, Wright seemed like he's starting to make some a little adjustment. He came out real straight at. Keeps nodding his head as if to say, yeah, you got me. How much longer is he gonna be doing that, the whole fight? He's keeping his chin right up in the end. I think Billy Joss realized that and told Bougie have to throw that straight right hand on the top. And you see, you saw a little slick holding and hitting there, cuffing with the left hand, smacking with the right. This guy's from Chicago. They know their tricks of the trade there, eh? Of course. Chicago and New York have some great fights. I think Wright is leaning on him, and Bougie, I've got to find a way how to, like, step aside, move, just walk him over, and land those shots. There you go. Wright is now trying to take away the distance on him, isn't getting right up in his face, in his chest, as you said before. Not a bad move on Bouye. Not at all. Don't give him any room to operate. He likes that. He, I mean, he's a smart guy in the ring. He knows he's, he's, his awareness. But so is, so is Wright. Wright is making some small adjustment, but he keeps himself high in the air. Now, Bouye does not need much room to work. No, his arms are he, he, he generates power from about six, six, six inches. inches away. He doesn't need much room to work, but he likes a little more room than he's uh, Wright's given him here. Here in round two at the Millennium, oh, undefeated cruiserweights, much anticipated local fight here. I think the difference in this fight here is gonna be that Wright is staying straight up and Bougie knows how to bend and adjust to his punches. I think this way he should take advantage of Wright Keeping him on the rope. Don't let him come forward. Surprised at the lack of head movement from Wright. I uh, thought I had seen in video him slipping and ducking a little bit more than I've seen to this point. He's trying, but he's dropping his hands while he's doing it. If you look at Steven Bougie, he's really going, he's going to school on him. He's putting him, there you go, short punches. That's the right hand that's going to get him. That's it. Bouye having a lot of luck with that short right hand. He ain't won there, but Bouye right is piling right. up points in this round. Right is in shape. I think if Bouye is not in shape, this <laughs> Billy know what he's doing because this fight, right is there in his face. He even got to be smart. He got to pick his punches. Otherwise, he's gonna punch himself out. See, right is feeling it. He's getting warmed up. Another Bouye up. round for me, Nurma Lork. <laughs> Nurma, I want you to assess and tell our viewers right away if you see any adaptation which Wright is performing to start round three. Wright is making an adjustment, but he's not, the thing is he leaving himself wide open for punches. And Bougie Squares out, up too much, yes, doesn't he, Norman? Sure does, and that's what gives Bougie out that, that, that little six inch right hand or hook 
to be landing. Anytime he throw that six inch punch, it's gonna land because he, he don't need to open up his arms to hit right. Right is standing straight up. See, every time. Straight up, squared up, open for business. Yeah. You need to bend his legs a little more and go down. See, Bougie don't have to go nowhere. All he got to do is turn his hand. There you go, just like that. All he got to move and punch, see? Beautiful, beautiful combination. Now you need to leave him on the ropes. Don't let him slide back. Booyah, right hand of the body. Can't pull out on this guy. His arms are long. So you got to stay within punching range. These guys are well conditioned. Because one, they would have went down already with a good punch. This is a great, great fight for two undefeated guys to be meeting at the Millennium in Brooklyn. Nice chant. A lot of Bouye rooters coming down from Yonkers and the Bronx and New York City. Good crowd here at the Millennium. So far, like what they see of the hometown guy versus the Chicago out of towner. You need them body shots. Just right is starting to make adjustment with his head. He realized he was getting hit with that hook. You know, you got to have really good reflexes, though, when you're fighting Bouye. You sure do. He got quick hands, does damage from six, eight inches away. He sure do. He get... Wright is doing a smart thing, though. He's going from head to body and trying to slow Bouye out down a little bit. And we are seeing Bouye on the ropes more in the last two rounds. We got a mouthpiece down. Mouthpiece down. Going to get a little break in the action as soon as the ref detects yeah. a little seam in the action. Bougie, ref calls for yes. time. Bouye's mouthpiece come out. You don't always read anything into that, but sometimes you do. He's a little winded. Yeah. He's looking for that second win, and if he can catch that second win, it might take him a round or two to catch that win. But if he do, he's going to be a long night for Wright. But Wright is smart. He's making adjustment. He's leaning up on him, hitting him to the body. This is the best round I see right here. Bouye ate a right hand there, maybe the stiffest so far. It comes back with the left hook, but Wright is a little bit more confident in this round. Find some things that are working here. Leaning on Bouye more, getting him into the ropes, bullying him a little bit more. A better round, much better round, dare I say, for Junior Wright from Chicago. I, I gave Wright that round. <laughs> just... Absolutely. Wright is... Wright is a real con good condition fighter. So if this is a battle of who has the better second wind, we might know. favor the Chicago guy. We right. shall see. That windy city. And Bouye coming back with that short little right hand. I think he got busier get off the rope. I like in to tight. See keep, get him on the rope. Turn him around right now. Turn him and put him on the rope and let his hands go. Normal, I don't know if he believes he has the strength advantage to do that. Steven? Yes. I think he do. It, it don't have to take strength. It takes a little skill. Just turn him as he punch. Right now, he need to do that because Wright is getting the better on him. They are trading on the ropes here. Hey, Steve, Bouye's back to the ropes. He ate a left hand Wright there. Wright is coming like a freight train. You know, Steven got to be, he has the box. He's going one way. He has to, there you go, tie this guy up, get his rest, and then continue on. But Wright is winning the round so far. Very busy pace for cruiserweights, normal. These guys are fighting like middleweights, man. I got to give them credit. I see more punches in this fight than a Hopkins fight. This, these guys are really action-packed. They, well, they, really they together. ain't 49 years old, bro. Well, they, they're putting some fights. They're putting some punches together. You think that pace favors Wright, however, don't you? I think so. Right? I think Wright is a, he seem a more compact fighter. He seems like he's a condition. I think Bougie have got to try something different. He's trying and there's to hold Wright with that holding and hitting again. Yes. Second time we've seen that. Ref's going to call him out on that. Yeah, but both Doesn't doing take it, a know. point. Yes. I think Chicago guy is doing it more. No offense. But it's, it's a fear fight. You know all what right, I mean? I don't right. think nobody's, you know. I think Steve needs to turn him around. There you go, like that. Back him up. See? Oh, and He's getting the caught, left hook back. caught Booyah. What better action could you get in a small card like this? in Brooklyn at the Millennium in Brighton Beach. Well stated, sir. I mean, and another left hand. Bouye got to have that right glove up. 
block it, slip it. He got something. Rolled, yes. His defense Rolling is straight up. Something. I think Dimitri made a great fight here. And would you have stand up and win this fight? He should be he should be moving up another step. This fight here is excitement. Big if right now. It is still a coin flip. That's what we said going yes. into it, and that's what we're feeling now still. Wright is again winning the round. I think so. Be the left hook is fight. having lots of luck for him. I mean, he, he's not making adjustment. He's hitting him with the same hook over and over right. instead of him rolling under the punch and coming back with the overhand right. Smart move, smart move. The referee wasn't involved when he stepped back and he came right back in and punched. And right, Once right again, that left hook, though, probably gave right the round. I'm, I got my, my partner here. Wilson, round five. Wilson, standing with me, looking at the fight. Wilson, what do you think about this fight? I think it's a very competitive fight, really close fight. It's a great fight, actually. And Wilson is a promoter at one promotion, also my partner with Luis Galazzo and some of the other fighters at Star City Boxing Club. And we're looking at a great fight here. Wilson, are you enjoying yourself? I am definitely enjoying myself. And I'm happy for Dimitri also. We have a great show, very competitive fight. All right, keep enjoying your night. So yeah, far, looks like fight. Junior Wright, once again, working a little bit harder, the volume edge in the first part of this fifth round. I think Bujiyab is making him land that hook at will now. You know, he's, he's making it easy for him to get in there, see? This is, not, this is not a fight where he wants to lean on that rope. He got to turn him around. Right, has, right found a home for that hook. Every time he throw it, he's going to land it. Because Bujiyab is not making no adjustment to him. Beautiful jab. But he waits, see? It's not good. It's not a, it's, he's making a long night for himself and be sitting on that rope right now. Wright is not respecting Bouye's power. He shouldn't because he's a more boxer. There you go. What about that left hook, though, from Bouye? There you go. He's going to the body. Keep going downstairs. That's the only form And with the down. right hand. Both hands going to the body is Bouye. But once again, story of the fight. Eight another left hand from Junior Wright. Right, right is getting winded. He's, his output in the last two rounds has been very extensive, you know? Junior Wright said at the press conference the other day, I'm a come forward type. I'm an aggressive Ooh, type. What a Landed right a hand. Sharp right hand there. So far, that is what we've seen. Pressing the issue on Bouye, making him work, bullying him against the ropes. I think Bougie need to go back to that body attack he was doing before. You need, there you go, right there. It's not a low blow. He's just going on the hips. The trunks are high, so you know it's not like a low blow. He's just he's just throwing the punch on the hips, and the hips do slow you down after a couple rounds. He's following the instructions of his corner. I'm sure Billy's telling him to you know slow this guy down. This guy's coming like a freight train. Better round for Bouye in the second uh, part of the fifth round. Every time he seems to move ahead of the round, he gives Wright a chance to get back in the fight. He's letting the right measure him. No good. Woo, nice hook by Steven. That's the punch he got to look for. He got to roll and come up and turn him. That's what he should be doing all night. Turn him and put him on the rope. He got to keep, he's going to go to that hook. I give Bouye that round for better work the last two-thirds of the round. I don't care how much track you run or how much you do outside. When you get in this ring, is it totally these lights? Amen. I'm with you. On the same page, Normal Lork. Michael Woods here at the Millennium Theater. Dimitri Salida Promotions. Star of David. Steve Bouye from Yonkers. Slipping a little bit more, a little bit more, a little more active with the head and the torso. Never a bad idea, Normal Lord. These guys are really putting out, man. They're really, you know, great shape. They're working hard. They're giving the fans a great fight. Good shot by Bougie. That's what he needs to do, keep going to the body. 
Bouye is keeping that right hand glued to his right ear a little bit better, a little bit yeah, better. Still, it, yeah. still getting caught with the left hook every now and again, but not as much. And he clipped right, right with the left hook there. Sure that had the crowd buzzing. And Bouye ate a solid right hand from right. Power punches galore in this fight, folks. This is this is competitive. This is this is a great fight. I think Dimitri had put on a great. This should be a TV fight where you had a show box or ESPN date, right? Here. Undoubtedly, sir. You had th three of the fights where you had a, a main event, a co-main event on both three last fights. We had great fights. Bouye back to the ropes here. Right, not quite as active now in the last couple rounds. Volume has fallen off. And in an even round, some would say, yeah, the hometown guy might get a little bit more love. That's what the right team told me. They're very worried about that. I would too. It's only sensible. It's only sensible, but you know, you got to remember, if it's a close round and there's, nobody's getting robbed, it's a, it's a fear fight. Somebody, somebody's bleeding, you know. We got a blood alert in the in the ring there at the Millennium. Haven't detected where it's coming from just yet. We're on it though. Looks like it's Bouye in his nose. Bouye's nose. It's bothering him a little bit. He's uh, blowing the snots and blood out. Wow. And right, he hurt him in that a round. left hand. He was hurt. He got stunned with that hook. Right misses. Right wildly. Getting, right is getting too aggressive. He just need to keep doing what he was doing. Missing those kind of punches make you more tired. Comes back with the right hand though and the left hook. These Not guys, making it easy for these judges, normal. These guys are making, they, I mean, they're really throwing some brutal left hooks. This is a great fight. I'm gonna say the crowd should be enjoying this. Bouye wanted the doctor's corner to pull out a loose tooth. They said, no way, fight will continue. Haven't seen that before, Norma Lork. He wanted a uh, little act of dentistry in the corner there. I think it was a good thing. He got some more rest, but he also gave Wright some rest. Oh. And Bouye ate a hard, hard right so, shot. This is a real Bouye taking fight. punishment in the corner. Wright is really laying the punches in, his power, his strength. Every, he's throwing his whole body behind these punches. Bouye getting frustrated. He is. Glaring at the referee. This is the proverbial deep waters now, Norma Lorik. I think Wright is, Wright is caught a second win. I love seeing that blood. You have to. Good. That's what boxing is signal that about. you're winning. There you go. Nice but Bouye coming back with hard shots of his own. What a round. Bouye spitting copious blood out on the on the canvas. Firing right hands. Both men lagging slightly in energy here. Well, every time you think they, they're not throwing punches, they're digging a little deeper to get a few more out of themselves. Wow. Right with the left hook. Was, and he's hurt. Bouye is, is hurt. With that, hook. that was a beautiful temple punch. Jellied his legs. He should maybe hold, hold on, on, and that's what he's doing. He's doing a smart thing right now. But right sees it now. He was hurt. He needs to step in and try to finish this fight right now. I don't know if Steven is going to come out for the next round. He's He looked really, really hurt. He's trying, he's putting everything together. Bleeding from the nose, bleeding yep. from the mouth. Loose tooth. All kinds of problems for Steve Bouye. But he comes back with the left hook. Hold on, hold on, Steve, hold on. Hold on, hold on. If helpers survive this round, go back in that corner. They have to soak him down with some ice and water and bring him back. He's, he's trying. He's a little bit discombobulated, right. normal. Nice shot, he went to the right. Right place, when you hurt, you go low. 
Referee tells Bouye to keep him up now. Did a smart thing to slow him down a little bit. When you hurt. Good body shot by Wright. Wright is a smart fighter. He knows what he's doing in there. He's not undefeated for no reason. Wow, beautiful. His adjustment. Bouye wow. taking shots. Oh, man. Back to the ropes. I'm hearing the advice telling him to move, but Wright is just up in his what face when he yes. does move. I think Not an easy call on how to deal with this Wright. You don't see the jaw puffing out or anything, but I believe the tooth is hanging by its Price literal down. root. And this fight is hanging by a root here. Bouye is, is on the defensive now. Wright is, is tracking eight. him down, being the predator, yes. seeing and smelling the blood. I have right up, right as I won the last round. He should be up on the fight. Maybe the last two. He should be. Spitting a lot of blood out, Normal. You know, is you, Booyai. You're in that corner, you, you're thinking, this, should I stop this fight or we live to fight another day? Or And the referee's stepping in there. I think the referee's time to. Time, asking for time. Referee is warning Wright for going low. We suspected maybe he was stopping the fight. We did not know. You know I, I, I think the With the presence of so much blood. I don't think that was called for. I think they're both beating each other. I didn't see fight. it, frankly, either. I, I didn't see think, it either. You know, we ju I just came off a fight like that with Luis Galazzo and Carl. Right. So I'm talking on experience here. And I don't think this should be happening right now. It was a bad call by the ref. What do you ref think? Ref Murdaugh is giving him time. I this frankly didn't see the, anything straying that low. This is I'm going to I'm gonna defer to him uh, being up close, and I myself yeah. didn't see it, Normal Lord. You got to show me a replay with that. You know what I mean? This is. And now time in. Was, I think that was a. Um, I don't know if it's going to help Stephen, but. Wright, Wright got his number down packed. Keep your hands up, Wright. Keep your hands up, Wright. Keep your hands up, Wright. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up, Wright. I think Bougie had lost his power to hurt Wright. His hand speed has dropped right. off dramatically. Dramatic. Wright is a smart I mean, guy. I like 60% of what it was at the start. This is a tough position to be in, you know, as a ref. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's uh, and it's not, it's not fear to right who he's been putting pressure all night and, you know, coming up. He keeps coming. He keeps banging. He keeps working hard. Hard wow. left hooks from right. Four of them right in right. front of us. Blood is all over. I think our suit got a little bit, but um, we'll take that to the cleaners, would we? Whoa. Will it come out? Will it come out is the question I mark. I think they got to start looking at this kid right now and, you know, let him fight another day. Don't, don't let him keep Hard him. left hook just as that, he said that from Bouye. I don't think Bouye. that hurt right at all. Right just got him a little more mad. <laughs> we are getting bathed in blood here, Norma Lork. This is guts and blood right here. Steven, Steven is a young 23-year-old. Young who could fight another day, you know? <laughs> but he also, he got a fight in him. He's, he's a guy that's never gonna give up, and he's gonna fight to the last. Another tight, tight round. Back and forth tussle, cruiserweights. Wow, this is, this is a brutal fight, man. This is a fight here where fighters should get paid. You know, this is, a, I mean, at the highest scale level, you know, this is, these are the kind of fights that these guys fight at this level. And there's bigger fights out there for the winner out of this fight. Bouye in a hard left hand. Wright likes that result. He's on him, backing him up against the ropes. Working with combos. Wright finished in his corner. But Wright I could think... have well taken that round with that last flurry. We're going to do it again. Round nine. WBC International well. Cruiserweight title fight. The right corner told their man to come out with more fire. They He needs to win conclusively in New York in the other guy's zone. And he's coming out with fire and fury. Come on, 
Chant of let's go, Steve. He ate a couple left hooks. Right yeah, clubbing really hard with the left support. hand. Bougier. And right is just, right just keep coming, man. He's not stopping. He's going to keep coming until this fight is over. This is a real, real, real brutal fight. He's you could chant all you want. That's not going to dissuade Junior Wright from Chicago. You got to give your hats off to Junior taking this fight, coming to New York. I think there's a little resting, which they deserve, but. Junior's, Junior seems like he's the most stronger fighter. He has his, his feet under him. And he's been the pursuer and in Bouye's face just about the whole time. Yes. Oh, he hit him with a, he caught him with an uppercut. Normal we visited. Gleason's the other day, I was doing some TV work with Steve Farhood of the Boxing Channel, and one of the trainers there was telling Wright, you can beat Bouye, you just have to outwork him, be in his face the whole time. That's the way you're gonna win. And that's what he Wright might have listened. Doing. Maybe you spoke to Wright, Wright got some advice. Trainer that has seen Bouye over the years said, you know what, you can outwork him, be in his face the whole time. I suspect that's the way Junior Wright fights anyway. But the advice didn't hurt. He is in Bouye's face. He is backing him up. He is backing him up against the ropes. He is the busier man, but Bouye still bopping, still answering. Energy isn't there like it was in the first round, that's for sure. But he's still in the game. You gotta give these guys all the credit. They're standing there and, you know, with the holding, the wrestling, the fighting, they, they're not giving up. The corner, the corner with Bougier have to really be motivated. They keep t taking him back, and Bougier is standing up. I guess that's what age, being a 23, this is probably the roughest fight of his life. Absolutely. Right now he's fighting for, for his career right now, you know. A loss here takes him back a fight or two. We have one. We have one more round. Who comes to centering first? Junior Wright does. He's sending a message to the judges. I want this, maybe a little bit more. We shall see if it plays out in the 10th and final round. We're gonna see. This, I think this is, this is the round right here. This is gonna tell. I think Steven need to come out with an urgency of trying to, you know, go for, the, go for that last big punch that you have. But right you, seemed like he went for the big punch. You heard that left yes. hand land. Bouye has done a better job defending it, keeping his right glove up, but still every now and again, big one lands, big thumper. Thudding left hand from Junior Wright from Chicago. Junior keeps landing that hook at will, but he gets hit with the hook also. He keeps his hand, keeps his right hand down. Ooh, body shot, oh man. Another left hook. Sent Bouya back a half a step. Wright's power has diminished over these last five or so rounds sure himself. Have. So, but Bouya, you know, he's splitting out blood. That's hard to breathe. That gets you really tired. He can't breathe. He's not breathing through his nose, you know, as much as he is with his mouth. And his mouth, mouth. is full of blood, yes. so he can't breathe through there properly either. Absolutely not getting the oxygen that he would like. That means you're either Great spitting point. and swallowing blood at the same time. That's not a good good thing but he's a warrior that he is sir junior Wright, not with the same energy that he's had earlier in but the he's fight a stronger guy but he he's has coming forward yep. i see one of the judges leaning into the ring because the ref is blocking him it's a hard fight That's to score he had to go for Bouye landing a hard right hand there you go last round hard right hand Bougier came back. That's From the depths about. of his heart. The last round, he had to go for the knockout. Nurma Laura called it. Digging the deep fans. down, finding a little shred of energy. Yep. Great fight. Great fight. You can't ask for nothing better than this in boxing, no matter where you at. These are totally Bouye landing guys, hard shots. Leaving everything on everything and every part of their soul in that ring. 
This is what champions are made of. Bouye senses an opening. Hard shots. Great fight, great fight. Spurting blood. What Spinning a fight. it out. Bouye Steven Bouye. So much, so much. Ref calls for time. Piece of tape hanging off of Junior Wright's glove. The referee tried to rip it off himself, but he needed to go over the corner to get it The corner should be off. taking their time. I will take my time to cut that off. Give him some time to rest. It's up to the referee. Bouye getting some instruction in his corner. Now the referee sends him to a neutral corner. Taking a long time in that right corner, and now we got time in. Back to brutal cruiserweight action. They got an equal amount of time. I think Bouye is a step in there and go for the go for the knock. I begin Bouye is taking this yep. round conclusively. Yes. Ten seconds. If this was an even fight going into it, Bouye is winning this round. But he had a chance to knock him out. And that's it. What a fight. This a is, darn fine cruiserweight title fight. fight. I love this fight. This, they should do this again. These guys really fought. You can't ask for nothing better than this. This, this is where you fight till you drop. And this fight here, they left everything in the ring. I don't know how these guys are going to wake up tomorrow, but they're going to need a week rest. David Diamante on the mic. Ready to give us a winner. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of action here at the Millennium Theater, we go to the judges' score totals. Don Trella, 96 94 for right. John McKay, 96 94 for Kuya. And Robin Taylor scores this contest. 95 95, we have a split draw. You can't write a script uh, like this. This is a tremendous fight, and both of these guys deserve a lot. Both of these guys deserve a lot of respect, and they're both champions, and they're both winners. And the boxing world deserves a rematch, and and, uh, and we have to have it soon. Well, Michael, another outstanding night of boxing. Dimitri Salida, star David Promotions, delivered again. Super scraps, and it was a back and forth tussle. Another good one put on by Salida. And uh, we got to thank you for watching, guys. I'm sure we'll be back in a couple months for Michael Woods. Normal Lorik, we had a great night of boxing. We'll see you soon on Brooklyn Brawl. The sports tradition in Brooklyn, New York is second to none. And this evening at the Millennium Theater, some of the brightest young professional boxing stars join together for bragging rights in the city of dreams. It's the Brooklyn Brawl, and the action starts now. Another beautiful night in the great city of New York. We're in Brooklyn. The lights are shining bright for the Brooklyn Brawl at the Millennium Theater. Hello, everyone. Good evening. I'm Harry Chickma, alongside boxing expert Mike Woods. And what a great event we have coming up. Up and comers, people trying to make their mark on this sport, competing in the city of dreams. So what we have here is guys that I call aspirational. Okay, they're not world champions, but they're looking to get there. And sometimes what you have is better fights than on those fancy pay-per-views. Steven Bujage is fighting for the New York State Cruiserweight title. He fights Elvin Sanchez. It should be a pretty evenly matched fight. Bujage will be the favorite coming in, has a little bit more experience. He's had some great sparring. He's a really good prospect. I like him to win, but I expect a good, clean, hard bout. And someone who knows New York so well, the promoter of this event, Dimitri Salida. I mean, he's here. He's put on a good event, hasn't he? Salida is a world-class fighter. He might even be a better promoter. Uh, he's getting a reputation of putting good, hard, evenly matched fights on. So we're looking forward to a really great night here. Will be a great night. You heard it from Mike Woods. The Brooklyn Brawl starts now. a lot of local talent and when these guys get a platform to showcase what they can do I mean it's, there's no telling what else I mean a, an event like this would lead to for like these guys on a personal level you know 
You know, I got all my friends coming here. I got all the support from the gym that I train in. And, you know, I got to put 125% in here because I feel like a pressure. It's, it's definitely an amazing feeling, you know. I mean, it can easily turn into the worst day of your life or the greatest day of your life, you know, depending how the outcome is. But uh, always something for the for the record books, you know. You know, it's a big fight. You know, my first title, I'm fighting for the New York State title, so I'm pretty excited and um, looking to put on, looking forward to put on a good show. Welcome back to New York City and the Millennium Theater for more Brooklyn Brawl action. The evening began with a four-round junior welterweight matchup between Marco Suarez from the Bronx and Samuel Mora from Plattsburgh, New York. And that was followed by a six-round junior lightweight battle between Angel Garcia from Brooklyn and Micah Branch from Columbus, Ohio. Here are Mike Woods and Nermal Lorick with the action. Ripped a nice left hook to the body there. But I think if he throw more straight punches and instead of waiting, like right now, he's putting the combination together. I think this is his opportunity right here. If you don't try to take him out now, the, the fight is just going to be a four-round decision. Oh, that, my. That was a perfect Very right sharp hand. right hand. Wow. And beautiful. another one. That's... Ref looking at it, and that's it. Oh, no, no. End of the story. Two really hard right hands. So Marco Suarez gets the win. Goes to 2 0 oh, and 1. There we go. Oh, Garcia tagged him there with a left hand, Nermal. That's Maybe one of the best punches of the fight exactly. there, pal. You know, punches make it 10 seconds left. There you go. Sharp, Sharp. landing yes. from Garcia. That's, woo, that Power was punches nice. to finish beautiful, up. Beautiful combination by Angel. Angel is really getting inside and trying to hurt Branch now. So Angel took a unanimous decision where he deserved that. Benson Hurst is very happy, happy tonight. Yes. We now go to fifth round action of a middleweight belt, which saw Rachman Yuzabov taking on Bronx native Steve Martinez. Mike Woods and Nermal Lorik have the call. Martinez told me before the fight, he says, I don't, I don't want to say it'll be the new Steven Martinez. He didn't want to say that he's reinvented himself, but he wanted to uh, add to his arsenal a little bit. Don't know exactly if he's added to his arsenal, if it's the same old Martinez, but fans certainly like this fight. I think he, he has, I mean, this, this is the kind of fight that you look for in um, boxing to really bring the, the fans to their t defeat. And um, Martinez is, he's, he is throwing a lot of punches. I think the last round, he probably threw close to 75 punches in that round. I'm here with uh, Norma Lorican, who is my own personal CompuBox man. <laughs> Ooh, Martinez seemed like he's hurt. The eye is uh, swollen. The, his left absolutely, eye. Absolutely, the left eye. He a headbutt or, or glove, a thumb in his eye. He's blinking, blinking, blinking. blinking. If you're Yusubov, you want to oh. jump on that. Yep. And he is with a right hand. Right hand, perfect. He's, not a, he's, he's a smart fighter, Yusubov. People got to remember, this guy fought a lot of world-class fighters, and he's a, he has no quitting him in six rounds, which I think is plays into Martinez's hands. Martinez is taking his time, but this is a point where, where when you got hurt, there you go, he's right hand, he got to let it go. The left yeah. eye is a little bit swollen. Martinez is working through it, though, and we have another mouthpiece out. The ref is going to call time. That bothers you. Martinez, I think, is... If your mouthpiece goes out three times, you lose a point. You know, I don't know how the referee... Is that automatic? Or is that be, up yeah. to the up to referee, just, referee know, discretion? When you get tired or your mouthpiece is just falling out, sometimes you might need to change his mouthpiece, you know? Right. But I think need a, a, little need bit a new tiredness. dentist, is that what you're saying? I think this, is, this, this has a lot. This, taking a lot. this fight is taking a lot out of Steven Martinez because he is throwing a lot of punches for six rounds. And again, 15 months of a layoff and coming back in a fight like this, he has a lot of courage. He's shown a lot of courage in that ring. Oh, beautiful, beautiful he just landed a sharp left hook. And another. I think if he turned the hook a little more, it'd be a more cleaner punch. He's slapping a little bit with the hook. Many compliments to give you, Sabov. Yes. Game as they come. He got a real good chin, that kid. 
Wow. This is this is a great fight. Beautiful right hand by Martinez, but Yusinov takes it and comes back. He's he's a game fighter. He's being the aggressor now. I think he's being a little too on the outside, getting hit with a straight up left hook. Both men have been open for the left hook pretty much every round. Every round. And a right hand, a sharp right cross from Martinez. Back to Yusubov into the ropes. Just keeps coming back, though. It was a nice hook and a nice body shot landed right before that hook. I really want... Oh, that was, Yusubov falls down. He was pushed down by Martinez. Martinez is very tired. You can see he's, he's in a survival mode. There's 10 seconds left. And I, I, I wouldn't like to see nobody get stopped in this fight. I think it was a great fight to go to the scorecards. Which Martinez, you know, won most, most of the, the rounds. End of round five. Another doozy. This is a great fight. I think both of them have a lot. They took a lot of power out of each other, and I think it's just going to be a who wanted more in this round. This could be one of those fights where Martinez wins a shutout in theory, but that would not tell the tale of the fight, would no, it? No, it wouldn't. I would. Wouldn't give the story at all. I think it's a great fight for, for Martinez. Yusinov is another a guy that people look at and say, wow, I could beat him, but this is he's showing why he is one of the toughest opponents most of these top-rated pros fought in the, in the past. Sixth and final round here at the Millennium. This, Real good fight. This is a great opportunity for Martinez to put his skills and show what he's made of, you know? I think he has a lot of little things to learn and, you know, put together, and I think he'll be a great accomplished fighter after that. Again, Salida, like who co-promotes him with Roy Jones. Oh, and he hurt Yusubov. Martinez hurt him. He's jumping on him, and he's going to stop the fight. The referee hops in. Yusubov is bitterly protesting. He was hurt. Again, we can say it was, but I think it was this fight here was timely stopped in a, a great time. I think he was about to open up and get hurt. That left hook really finished him off. Martinez came out and threw a beautiful combination, and um, Yusinov was just right all night. He was landing that hook, and finally it landed perfect. We was talking about him slapping a few rounds ago, uh, the round before, and this time he turned it over. It came down to the final round. Final what led round. to that final surge? He was tough, man. You know, at the last round, it was basically who wanted the most. And I went there, and I wanted the most, and I felt more stronger, more focused. And, you know, I caught him with that, with that hook, and he got hurt. Congratulations, Steven hey, Martinez, a winner, TKO here at the Brooklyn Brawl. There's much more action from the Brooklyn Brawl coming up. We'll be right back after these brief messages. Welcome back to New York City and the Millennium Theater for more Brooklyn Brawl action. We now have a junior welterweight bout as two New York City natives go head to head. It's Jonathan Kuba taking on Dimash Nizov. We're going to have a little uh, intra borough rumble here. Nizov lives on Staten Island, Kuba, Manhattan guy. Uh, we're going to have a style clash here. Nizov uh, fights off the back foot. He's going to counter a little bit more. He doesn't want to get into a rumble. Kuba, he likes to rumble. He's a feast or famine guy. He either stops you or he gets stopped. We'll see where it goes, Harry. Both 137 pounds. Nizov hailing from Kazakhstan now, living in Staten Island. Four wins and zero losses, two draws. Kuba minus, meanwhile, 7-5-1 with five knockouts. Nizov pumping the jab. Both men getting warmed up, but uh, came in with a good sweat. Power punches uh, are being thrown. It's not a total feel em out round. How have you liked the action thus far? Hey, the last fight that we just had, this one is a hard one to come into the ring after that. Uh, the rumble between Steve Martinez and Rachman Yusubov was uh, a great stuff. So these guys are going to be. Uh, Hard pressed to top it. But very quick fighters here. You can see, you know, sort of evenly matched, same weight, very quick. Early exchange here in the opening round. Both guys coming ready to fight. 
Kuba, five of his seven wins have been by knockout, but three of his five losses, he's been stopped, so. Kuba trying to be the aggressor here. Locked, though, in arms. Talk to Nizov before the fight, Harry, and he said, my game plan is to use my speed. I got to be smart. I don't want to get into a brawl. I want to use lots of jabs. He's seen Kuba fight before. He knows Kuba likes to brawl. He doesn't want to give Kuba what he wants. Absolutely. Kuba, five knockouts. Definitely knows how to throw the big blow. And so far, Dimash is uh, moving well, moving smartly, using the jab to establish the tone that he wants. Nice little left hook he landed there too, Harry. Getting the chin of Kuba. Nizov was so relaxed before tonight's fight. I also spoke with him, and he was just kind of smiling, saying, hey, it's an honor to be here competing in New York. We, did you see him just chewing on raspberries before? Yeah, chewing on raspberries, Chomping on raspberries. relaxing, <laughs> smiling. Yeah. Now he's all business, though. Look at the focus in those eyes. Right. Different guys will have different uh, styles before the fight. Some guys will just have a game face on, and they don't want to see your face or mine. This guy, just very chill, very relaxed. Kuba was definitely also having a good time, but just before the fight, it looked like he had total focus going on right now. So these guys ready to battle. Yeah, different sort of game face on him. Ooh. Nice exchange here. First round over, we're only playing four, but that was pretty competitive, evenly yeah. matched thus far. Yeah, I don't I don't really particularly want to score that to you. I mean, no, that, no. that was a tight round, Harry. Right now it's tight, and you know we will expect this probably to go the full four, I would assume. And what would a win here do for either of these competitors to get a victory at the Millennium Theater? Nizov is still in that uh, record-building mode. He's 4-0-2. You really want to... Uh, accumulate 10, 12 wins. Then you take that next step up, next grade of competition. You want to learn something in every fight. But unless you're a real tremendous amateur, you know, 150, 200 oh, or so Kuba punches. He, he just ate a hard right hand, did uh, Nizov. Now up against the ring, the ropes, losing their balance there after that tough exchange. Going back at it here. Kuba trying to go at the body. Nizov told us both he didn't want to get lured into a rumble. Well, I think he's been lured, Harry. Absolutely. A lot of action in this corner of the ring. Both boxers still have a hop in their step, though. Kuba trying to make a move here. You see Nizov exhibits nice hand speed. He can land with a lead right hand not everyone can do that the back hand and, and bang he just did it again the right hand lead to the body listen to those fans from new york cheering for their native or native rather kuba kuba ripped a hard left hook to the body real nice shot from nizov you could feel that from here better them than me sir absolutely oh another one to the right cheek. Nizov able to squeak out of that one. A little mini Ollie shuffle there, sending a message that, uh, you know, I got uh, pop in my hands and I got some nifty footwork too that I can pull out on you. So far, it looks like Kuba has this round though. Nizov against the ropes once again. Listen to those fans chanting. Ooh, forceful hit there. Nizov's corner wants him to get in and get out. Spin out. Do your business, unload, and then slide out. Don't wait for the receipt. You mentioned, though, Nizov showing some fancy footwork in this round, sort of like Muhammad Ali. Yeah. That's a nice compliment. Absolutely. Oh, but he still can't get away from the Kuba onslaught here. You feel like Nizov is grateful that bell just rang.
Kuba really showing some momentum in that round. Nizov doesn't have the same look, but you can't necessarily judge looking by uh, looking at the cover there. Here we go. So far, Third so round. good. He's coming out, popping the jab. You see Nizov. Oh, oh, he goes down. Right hand. Dropped and stopped. He's He went down and he went down hard. He clanged his head. Nizov with the right hand dropped Cuba. And he just did. He just did some flips and he fell on his head. What an amazing ending in the third round. Dimash Nizov with the knockout. What went through your mind when you saw him fall to the mat? As soon as he went down, I just wish he didn't get up. And I saw him, I saw him fall to the, the floor and he was cold. He was out cold. And I knew I won this one. Big victory, Dimash Nizov from New York, representing your home city here. What a good battle, and what a big victory in the third round. There's much more action from the Brooklyn Brawl coming up. We'll be right back after these brief messages. We're now back at the Millennium Theater in Brooklyn for more Brooklyn Brawl action. We've come to our main event of the evening as Patterson, New Jersey native Elvin Sanchez squares off against New York City brawler Steve Bujaj for the New York State Cruiserweight title. Mike Woods and Nermal Lorik have the call. This is going to be an exciting fight, I think. This is going to really test Bujaj where he is at. Michael Woods here with Nurma Lorik, trainer slash analyst, knows both these guys pretty well. Bujaj, longtime amateur, great pedigree, 10 and 0, seven knockouts. Sanchez, six, two and one with five knockouts. Sanchez has been touched on the chin, has been known to go down. I do believe Bujaj would not mind a knockout here. Yeah. Trainer Billy Giles was saying, "Look out, Sanchez." Sanchez throwing the bigger punches right now. Bujar is throwing a more jab. He's setting him up for the right hand. I think the last two fights was great fights. This one here is, has to build up to those two. Those two were great fights. Getting better and better. better we had now. Steve Martinez and Yusubov, then Dimash Nyazov nice. with a knockout. Hard to build on that for Bujaj. Yes. I think he has to be a little more consistent with the jabs. Oh, he got buzzed, buzzed. He with got a buzzed, counter yeah. left hook. That's what we're talking about. Bujaj got the, buzzed. This is a great fight to see where Steven at. You know, Steve, Steven Bujaj has a great jab. Definitely this buckled his leg. Whoa, what and a shot. down went Sanchez, Sanchez off the left hand. Sanchez ran right into the hook. Sanchez was coming in. He yes. set him up for it. Yes, Nermal. he did. He should have kept his pause. He just kept running right into him. He's taking the knee down. good. Ref asked him if he's all right. Fight will he, continue. I don't think he's good. And Bujar jumped on him. Now he's going to be over. I think right that's hand, it. Right hand. Two clubbing right, right hands. Right he's not holding. He should be holding him now and try to survive the round. Sanchez is in but deep not, trouble. Hopefully Sanchez don't throw no wild punch and catch Bujar coming in. But I think this is it. If you jump on him, keep a little, he needs to keep his space. He's hurt. He's hurt. The referee needs to step in at any point. If he stopped this fight, it wouldn't be a bad stop. If could, Sanchez his legs is hurt. Are gone. It's gone. Sanchez He's is out. hurt. The referee at any minute is going to stop this That's fight. That's it. Fight is over. Fight is Steve over. Bujaj, what first a, round stoppage win. What a great fight. We keep He's hopping from corner to corner. This is excitement. This tops off your start of a great career. We Bujaj. called it, Nermal. We, we said Sanchez, Sanchez has been tapped on the chin. Trainer Billy Giles said, you know what? Bujaj is going to hurt him, Mike. And darn it, he did. Didn't take him long. Billy's a confident trainer. He knows what he sees in there. It was a great fight. First round, I mean, what led to that momentum and the quick fist? I saw him come in wild. You know, he was throwing a lot of power shots. 
I saw a good opportunity to counter punch and uh, threw a left hook, a sharp left hook, and that's all she wrote. You're from New York, New York. You get a win in Brooklyn. How's this going to help you down the road? It's going to help me. You know, I have a pretty good fan base here, and um, it's only building. You know, and um, I love my fans, and I'm doing this for my father. This is for him. Congratulations, Steve Bouye, a winner tonight, picking up the belt. That wraps up this Brooklyn right, Brawl on, broadcast from Millennium Theater. For the rest of the staff, Mike Woods, Nermal Lorik, and Dimitri Salida, I'm Harry Chikma. We'll see you again next time from New York City.